thanks to God, the Lord is with us. Papa! I will come back to you! They beat me. They whip me. But they never, never break me. The action is picking up in the basketball season. The contenders are taking shape, and the star players are making their mark. DraftKings Sportsbook, today's video sponsor, is dishing out some can't-miss offers as hoop season picks up. New customers sign up with DraftKings using promo code SMOKE and bet at least $5 on any pregame money line wager. If your pick hits, you will get an additional $150 in free bets. Be sure to check out all the SMOKE same-game parlays tomorrow. Ride along with our picks so we can get this money together. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use the promo code SMOKE and receive $150 in free bets if their bet hits after placing a $5 pregame basketball wager. That's promo code SMOKE, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. It's never too early to play holiday music, and it's also never too early to start thinking about gifts. Whether it's for your friends or your friends in your pants, you can make this holiday season jolly with Manscaped. Do your little drummer boy a favor and use the Lawnmower 4.0. Avoid another silent night in the bedroom. Then add in Manscaped's top of the line shower products to have the people thinking, all I want for Christmas is you. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. It has everything you need to help deck the halls from your face to your balls, just in time for the mistletoe season. The Performance Package has each product from the best-selling Performance Package Plus. Ultra Premium Body Wash, Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner, and the Ultra Premium Deodorant. It's the best way to smell fresh from your Santa hat to your candy cane. The Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer and the Weed Whacker Nose Ear and Hair Trimmers feature a proprietary skin-safe technology to protect those delicate presents. Plus, both are waterproof, so there's no issue cleaning the snow off of your driveway. There's also a 4000K LED light on it, so you can light up the way like Rudolph. Now that you've groomed your candy cane, it's time to make sure you don't smell like a reindeer with the Platinum Package Shower Products. All of Manscaped shower gear is sulfate-free, vegan, and made to have your skin feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. But smelling good doesn't stop in the shower. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner can solve them stank problems all day long. And once it touches your sack, trust me, you'll never go back. And for the perfect stocking stuffer, add in the brand new Body Buffer, an incredible body scrubber that makes exfoliating easy and a lot cleaner than the old loofah. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code SMOKE at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code SMOKE. Manscaped. Get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. Welcome back. I can't even say another edition of All the Smoke because this is just not that. This is definitely not that. This is not that. I mean, I think after this episode, we might just need to retire our podcast. Not only that. And just hang it up. Hey, yesterday's price is not today's <laughs> price. <laughs> just let me man, say that. <laughs> man, we want to welcome to the show, man. Oh, man. I mean, what, what what can we say? I mean, one of the, the biggest stars in the world has been, you know, gracious enough to give him a little bit of his time. And... Sit down with us, man. Welcome to the show, Will appreciate Smith. Appreciate you, man. Will, Yo, we appreciate you, man. you, man. Appreciate having you. Absolutely. Very happy to be here. Thank you for allowing us into your space and having some of your time. Um, yeah, we're at Westbrook Studios. Yeah, we're, we're in, in the, the building. We're the yeah. Yeah. We're in the yeah, building. Just, uh, yeah, you know, I just, I just wanted to, you know, bring you out, bring you yeah, out to the, we to the, appreciate boot, it. To the booth. I'm only about 15 minutes from you, so oh, my really? kids, okay, you see, so I'm not too far. Yeah, he came from Atlanta, so he's got the hype. But let's get to it. You know, someone who's always lived their life in the public eye, mm -hmm. um, had to sacrifice a lot, obviously came with a lot, but mm -hmm. I wanna start with fatherhood. What yeah. are some stuff you can give fathers out there, guys like us that have strenuous mm -hmm. schedules, um, 
but still being there for the important stuff and, and learning on the fly because there's no real book or rhyme or reason to this. Oh man, fatherhood. Um, you know, th this, this has been um, probably the, the greatest period of my, my fatherhood. Um, I was uh, an, an okay father uh, for, for my first son. Um, I got a little bit better with uh, Jaden. Mm -hmm. I got my sea legs. <laughs> with 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 Willow, um, and probably the last couple of years of my life, I had uh, sufficiently suffered enough to have real wisdom. Mm. Um, and this last year with my kids has been the best parenting. Mm. Um, if I had to, if I had to say something. Um, to guide someone a, a, about it is first and foremost, everybody sucks at the beginning. It's okay, you know. It gets better. Yeah, right, it's, mm -hmm. it's okay to not be good at it. It's okay to make mistakes. And the best thing you can do for your kids is learn and grow yourself, mm -hmm. right? When, when we're trying to force our kids to do stuff and under th understand things that we didn't do, that we didn't understand, they see the bullshit. Right, right through it. And they lose, they lose respect. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, I found a place with my kids where I could say, I don't know. And let's, fig let's figure it out together. Mm -hmm. Let's go find that out to, together. But we're, we're doing this as a team. It's not me telling you how to do some stuff mm -hmm. that you can see I don't know how to do. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. We got a chance to watch uh, Best Shape of My Life. Yeah. Great piece. But yeah. again, the, your kind of nervousness when you had to tell the kids about yeah. how they are in the book. Yeah. And obviously it was received and well, and you guys laughed and you cried. But what kind of relief mm -hmm. was that once you kind of got through with that sit? You said it was a four hour sit down. Oh Therapeutic for you. I, I was probably around that same. Um, Two year ago, period, um, I decided I was going to examine my life. Um, and up until that point, I never looked back because mm. I knew if I looked back, that it would slow me down. Mm -hmm. So I was living in the future. I was trying to win. Nothing was going to stop me today. And I was just driving, driving, driving toward the goals and the accomplishments mm -hmm. of everything that I wanted to do in the material world. So probably about uh, two years ago, um, I guess I noticed a little bit of a lack in my ability to connect and love on a deep level, on a deep level, right? Um, I started noticing it with Willow. Willow was the one that was like, Daddy, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Um, and I noticed that I wasn't as proficient at connecting and, and, and loving somebody. I could provide, I can mm -hmm. provide, I'll yeah. lay it out. That's the easy part. Yeah, but in yeah. those moments when my kids were reaching for me, um, I was failing at the depth mm -hmm. that they were seeking. Mm -hmm. um, and I decided, like, what did that mean? And I felt that I had to deeply and truly examine my life. I had to examine my motives. I wanted to be the biggest movie star in the world. Why? Right? And, I, and when I decided to write my book, I decided to dig Don't in deep. to, mm -hmm. to my wow. life's experiences. Mm -hmm. And um, one, of the, one of the major things that I, uh, that I addressed with myself uh, was, you know, my father had been abusive in my house and I never talked about it. And when I wrote the book, I told myself I was gonna give myself the freedom to write it and purge. And I went in and I did it and it was the first time my mother and I had ever talked about it. Wow. I was 50 years old before I ever talked to my mother about the fact my father had beat her up. I drew a lot of similarities to that part when I was reading your book and then watching <clears throat> that show was, you know, my dad 
Marine, mm -hmm. street dude, protector, wanted, looked up to him. But at the same time, he was abusing my mom. Mm -hmm. And at a young age, I felt similar to you, that helpless feeling like, yep. I know I can't whoop him. Yep. So you just kind of have to sit there and take a how I mean, My mom passed in 07 from cancer, so I never got the chance to have that conversation. But just recently, like a month ago, <clears throat> I had a conversation with my dad. And at 67 years old, you know, for the first time, I, I had enough courage to say, like, Dad, I think you need some help. And I wrote him a long text message, and I was kind of afraid how he was going to respond. And he responded, Matthew, thank you. I didn't know you cared. I'll do whatever it takes to get better. And I was like, holy shit. Like, wow. that's not my dad's style. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, obviously preparing for this and watching your stuff, like, there was a lot of similarities from that standpoint. But once you were able to get that off your chest, how mm -hmm. did that feel? You know, it just, it, uh, it just opened up a lane for me and my mom to like really have a relationship. A real one, yeah. Right? Um, for me as a little boy, you know, I've watched my father beat up my mother and I didn't do anything. And I processed that as being a coward, you know? And everything in my life was about not being mm -hmm, a coward, mm -hmm. you know? And you know, my father also Air Force, mm -hmm. military, and uh, you know, he trained a discipline into me that, you know, I can manifest anything. Right. I can do anything, you know? And there was that realization, like, I can do anything, but you still didn't protect your mom. You let somebody beat up your mom, mm. and you didn't do nothing, mm. you know? And it's like, um, you know, it's been a real process purging that and, um, forgiving myself for being human, mm. you know? And I hated it. I hated that I'm, I'm human. Mm. I want to be Superman. Yeah, I mean, I still battle that for a time. Like, we're great now. Mm -hmm. you know, I lost my mom and I felt like I gained a father, but there was times where I'll sit and look at him like, motherfucker, I remember what you used to, you yeah. know what I mean? But I still, yeah. we're still at the house loving and hanging out yeah. and enjoying. But yeah. like you said, it's, it, it's a process to first and foremost forgive yourself. Yeah, that's for hard. sure. You can't do it for somebody else if you don't do it for you. First and foremost. Right? And it's, it's, it is accepting and allowing and being okay that you're not, you're not perfect. Right. And you're not meant to be. You're meant to mm -hmm. have your experiences right. and you learn and you grow along the way. And we're, we're all chasing our highest selves. And it's just gonna be, you know, most of the time we're not gonna be that. Mm -mm. We just saw the screening yep. of Emancipation, man. Mm -hmm. And let me say this to you. Um, I'm always intrigued about what character you're gonna play and, mm -hmm. and how it's gonna come out. But this was something that was unexpected by me. Yeah. I, I, I knew you could play any character, but just seeing you playing Peter mm -hmm. and learning his story, I learned a lot from watching this film, more than any film that I've ever watched. Wow. Because we grow up, you know, they already don't tell us the truth in our history, mm -hmm. but we grow up and see this picture yep. and never know this guy's name. Don't mm -hmm. know his story, don't know nothing. So the fact that you took time to tell that story was something for me because all I could see was the picture. Yeah, yeah. During the whole movie, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And this probably for me is top three of your films wow. that I've seen. Thank you, brother. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate that. Great job. Yeah, no, I went, I went, I went hard mm. um, at this one. Um, you know, it was it was without question the hardest film of my entire career. You know, we were out there. That's saying a lot. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, Ali was really hard physically, dialect, travel, but this one was without question pr almost twice as hard as as Ali. You know, um, and things kept going wrong. Right, mm. so it was it, it was like the ghost of the Confederacy was like y'all not getting this movie. <laughs> not getting this one. <laughs> like, no huh? sir, this one this one will never come out. This one will never come out. Right, so we we started the movie was set in in Georgia. So we're set, we're ready to go. We're going to start in Georgia, and then they passed those restrictive mm -hmm. uh, voting laws, and then me and Antoine was like, ah. Oh. 
we can't make this move. Like, oh, here. oh man. But it was like a couple of weeks before Damn. shooting. And Antoine was like, brother, we can't. And I was like, you right. So we said it to Apple. And to their credit, they didn't flinch. Mm. Mm. They was like, we can't make it there. So we had to reset the entire film and move to Louisiana, which turned out to be a benefit because the movie actually took place yep. in, yeah. in mm -hmm. Louisiana. Right. So we were mm -hmm. able to do uh, a lot of the actual locations. Wow. Chapala Bridge. Yes, of absolutely. Course. Okay, yeah, it was, you know. So One of we, the longest bridges in Louisiana. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We drove that a whole lot of days. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> up, right? yeah in that area, yeah. So, um, so we get there, we're in Louisiana, we set up, we got, uh, f you know, 400 extras. We're starting in the uh, Confederate prison camp, mm. right? So it's 400 extras, first day, get everybody geared up. We go out. On the set, a little bit of a lightning strike, and they and then the the uh, the rep comes out and says, "Oh, in Louisiana, if lightning strikes uh, near a set um, within two miles, shut mandatory down. thirty minute shutdown." We're like, you "Yeah, just we, didn't, the, we, didn't just, the, we didn't read the we didn't read the fine print. You just made that one <laughs> up. <laughs> we didn't read the fine print. So we that. had to move four hundred extras off the set. We had to wait the thirty minutes." start bringing them back, lightning strikes again, we have to take them back. We got one shot the Four. first day. Mm. Then there was heat index. So if you had, this is, you know, the Louis, you gotta read the fine print on these contracts, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So if it's 100 degrees with extras on the set for more than like 35 minutes, there's a heat index, so they count it as 125 degrees after a certain amount of time. At 125, 30 oh, minutes, wait. everybody off the set. So <laughs> we were two weeks behind after one, one week day. of shooting. Yeah. I was like, wait. <laughs> what are we doing? Wait, how is that possible? <laughs> then two weeks later, the hurricane hit. Mm -hmm. Tore up all the sets. Mm -hmm. and then we had to move to Baton Rouge. The ghost of the Confederacy. The ghost of the Confederacy. The Antoine's trailer burned down. Like, Someone's trying trailers to tell you can't something. burn down. Right. Like, it, but it was like literally every step of the way. Um, then we had a COVID outbreak and it was mandated that all 400 extras had to be tested before you could go on the set. So it was taking, you know, five hours in the morning just mm. to get everybody cleared before we could get a shot. We were at lunch. So, you know, and again, to, to, to Apple's credit, they never flinched. They was like, the world this. needs to see yes. this movie, and <clears throat> you know, I will be shouting them out forever. For those who say, why another slave movie? What, what do you say to that? This is not another slave movie. At all. Yeah. <laughs> it's a redemption story. Yeah, this is a, this is a freedom movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, this is a movie, you've, you've never seen this part of the story, mm -mm. right? It's like we we don't know about the the strength and the endurance, you know. Very rarely, um, as a black man, when you watch a movie during this period, can you feel good about it? Right. right. <clears throat> Peter, make you feel good mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Jack, Jack stood up during. It was just us and the and Jack standing up like. <laughs> Oh, damn, you all right, bro? <laughs> Jack, Jack stood up for oh, a bit. Man. <laughs> yeah, I don't oh, know man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. And um, there was a, there was a uh, you know, it, it is it's such a beautiful human story, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't make movies about periods. I make movies about people. Mm -hmm. Great people. Right? And it's about, this is a, this is a man that touched my heart, mm -hmm. you know? It was what he sacrificed, like, for us to be able to sit here, mm -hmm. you know? It's like they refer to that image as the first viral image. It was like cameras were mm -hmm. just invented. Like, that was one of the first pictures actually taken with a camera. He took the lens off and was yeah. timing, <laughs> and timing himself. Okay, yeah. for the new oh, that's how old the camera you know? was. <laughs> and it was like... Um, you know what? All of those keloid scars on his back, he suffered 
for us to be free. Each Absolutely. one. Absolutely. You know? And when that was on the cover of British newspapers and Britain was right on the edge of entering the war on the side of the South. And his, his image, his suffering is credited mm -hmm. with Britain, mm -hmm. you know, seeing the horrors of slavery and not entering wow. the wars to support mm. the, the South. There's so many other people like Peter that stories never get told that yes. probably was fighting that same fight. Absolutely. And probably didn't make it as far as him. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I probably yep. have that many people, but there's so many people that probably went through that same situation mm -hmm. that we would never hear about. There was a, did, did you notice the soldier in the battle scene? So there's a soldier, the young soldier. The one that's, he shot. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, the one, the, the one that he was saying, mama. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said, Go that see was her. an ode to George, George Floyd. Floyd. Mm. That's, that we had him saying mama to honor George. That's, I didn't get that at that mm -hmm. time. But I definitely I, heard him saying it. He yeah, said something what, like, what go, go, see her. go see her. Go see you, her. You crawled over that to him. Yep. Mm -hmm. mm. yep. Mm. So it was like, <clears throat> you know, Antoine, Antoine was so, that's deep. so serious about um, emancipation yesterday, but emancipation today. Mm -hmm. Still to this day. Right? And, you know, I, I feel like... That just gave me chills. You told me that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like everybody, you know, it's not a black story. It's it's an American story. And my hope for, for everyone who sees the movie is to be able to feel it and cultivate empathy. Mm -hmm. Right? It's it's easy to dismiss things when you don't have a visceral emotional right. attachment to it. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know. And for me, as as an artist at this point in in my career, I don't want to do nothing that I can't say where I feel like it will be a contribution to the human family. Mm -hmm. You know. And I I feel like this one, it it is. You, you did know, that. It it, it is. And I'm, I guess I'm, a, I'm not allowed to say this, but I'm saying it for Antoine. It is an absolute masterpiece, right? Mm -hmm. It is a masterpiece of, of filmmaking. He, you know, even the look of the film, and it's, it's, it's not black it and white. Right? Just about the color like, of the blood. The color, and yeah. The fire yes. and the flag, like certain things. Like and Antoine <clears throat> says something cold. He said, you know, it's like that. He says, I'm, I'm going to drain the color out of the Confederacy. Mm, mm. I was like, mm. you deep. felt it. Yeah, That's right. Deep. Yeah, felt absolutely. It. You know, and it's it's like you know, it was a it was a it was a horrible time in American history. And when I make a film like this, I'm making it because I think it can be helpful. You know, I feel like being transported into that experience. It just answers a lot of questions. You know, it gives you a visceral, emotional experience and just that one more click of understanding that can unlock that one more click of empathy. That part, as far as the overseer, mm -hmm. he even showed empathy and compassion when telling that story. Yes. I'm wired this way because this is what I really felt sorry for. I really, I, that's why I was given the food. Yes. But if I continue to feed her and she yeah. start feeding everybody else. They're going to take over. But, and, and, they gonna come and pull a you on you. So when I spoke with mm -hmm. George Floyd, that's what I said at the press conference. Yep. I said, everybody's afraid that we're gonna turn around and do to y'all what y'all been doing to us for the last five years. Mm -hmm. And that resonated to me. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That story, because he actually felt that. I don't think he was saying that story mm -hmm. to be a jerk. Like he was, he felt compassion. Yes. The fact that I really wanted to help her. He loved but that. But we girl. so wired to we so yeah. wired to hate y'all, yep. we have to. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And and Ben Foster. Uh, I, I, I credit I credit um, Ben Foster with getting my head right going in, into this film. Um, so the first day we're on set, things are going slow. So I'm standing up, you know, I'm holding court with the extras and I'm talking. I'm just trying to, you know, I'm, I'm a producer also. So I'm on the set and I'm trying to get things together. And Ben Foster walks on set and doesn't speak to me. And he walks over and he goes into his tent. He didn't even go to his trailer. He was, he was staying in his tent, his character's mm. tent on the set. And he goes in and sits down. And for six months, he didn't speak to me. He didn't make eye contact with me outside of a scene, 
right? And it was like, he just, mm-hmm. he just wasn't playing with this material. Mm-hmm. It was like, the material was important, the story was important, and he like, he got me into, <clears throat> into that mindset. That raised your game. Oh, yep, I was like, got it, got it. Mm-hmm. That's who we on? Not Ben, but what, one of the other actors. Um, so we're doing a scene, we're doing a scene, and he comes over, and you, you know, it was one of the overseers, and he says, uh, he says, uh, you, you know, you a cold one, ain't you? And ad libs a spit in my chest, and I was like, <laughs> 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 right? and I was like, no Will Smith here, right? Mm-hmm. No Will Smith here, mm. and I was like, absolutely. And I was like, I want to suffer that. And I was like, okay, mm. yep, no Will Smith. And I settled into that. And you know, I spent I spent uh, six months, you know, getting called nigger two hundred times a day mm. by some really good actors. <laughs> 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 oh, you say that too. You say that too well. Yeah, those are really good actors, man. You know, um, and, oh, and it was shit. it was like it was horrific. It was horrific, you know. Um, but I got a cut. I got cut, and I got to go over to my trailer, you know, and all of that. And it was like, but just. The, the ends of human brutality is excruciating, dude. Like, what we can do to each other, it's insane. like, it's, it, is, it is insane. It's literally insane. And, like, being, being, um, being submerged in that, um, even being out there in, you know, in that swamp, you know? And I, I was like, nope, we're not doing no stunt doubles. I'm going to be in the mm. swamp. I want to feel what Peter felt. Man. And, you know, it is was. Is it hard to turn that off, though, each night or after the film? Or is there a, a lapse of time where you're still in the mode? Or. Um, yeah, it's. it's, uh, it's... So I, I considered myself a good actor that knew how to go back and forth. I'd been to the edges, right. you know, mm-hmm. of that way. Um, I think I over, you know, I went a, a little bit too far with this one. I wasn't paying attention as as much, and I think you know a little bit of it got stuck on me. Willow is my Willow can tell, you know. Willow's all like, uh, uh-uh, uh, daddy, Mm-mm. you know. She like she can tell when I'm, you know, slipping into that other place. But um, yeah, I might, I might, I went a little bit too far, but but it, I feel like um, it got delivered. On oh, camera in absolutely. a way that people can feel it. I appreciate it, absolutely. You know. Emancipation will be, you know, on pace to be a huge contender for the Oscars. Mm-hmm. Nearly six months removed from your situation. Yeah. What have you learned about yourself from mm-hmm. that Oscar night? That that was um that was a horrific night, man. That was that was a horrific night. To you. For me, yeah, yeah. For yeah. You. Well, I made it, I made all it the real ones. Mm-hmm who understood, mm-hmm. I'm gonna stand up for my wife, whether I'm right or wrong in any place. Mm-hmm. So I understood that. I don't yeah. care what you say, nobody can make me think that anything you did was wrong. Let me tell you one of the the, uh, the words, cause I was right there. And I get home and my nephew, uh, nine years old, his name's Dom. And he is the sweetest kid in the world. You know, him and my sister live with me. And I'm sitting, we got these bean bags in the kitchen. I'm sitting in the kitchen, he's sitting between my legs and he's holding the Oscar. And he goes, why you hit that man, Uncle Will? And I was like, oh! You gotta explain that to him. And, and it's like, you know, that I'm gonna be crying. Somebody got tissue? Mm. Um, and, I, um, and it was, oh, I got one, I got one. And it was like, see, I knew y'all was gonna have me, yeah, right? <laughs> oh. It's all good. You you can't explain it to him. Mm. He stayed up late. Right, waiting for you. Waiting for mm-hmm. Uncle Will, you know. And it was like, you know, I can I can do all the justifications forever. Right. He won't understand it. He's he can't, you know. <sighs> Let's talk about Philly. Philly. 
Born and raised. Yes, man. Browns, where I spend most of my days. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Philly, we looking, we looking good on a lot of fronts in Philly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know. Don't talk about I'm a Cowboy fan. OK. So let's not go too far. Yeah, yeah. OK, yeah. <laughs> and you definitely don't want to have that conversation <laughs> with your Cowboys fan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> what was your upbringing like, though? Oh, uh, man. Yeah, it, it was um, Philly during that time was um, the, the, the 70s, you know, black folks in the middle class was moving on up, you know? Yeah. So it was, it was a really beautiful time. It was, it was like rich with uh, kids. There was, you know, 50 kids. In the neighborhood. In the neighborhood, yeah. you know? It was like just a really um, beautiful family, oriented. Not a care in the world. Yeah, not right, exactly, you know? So, you know, when I say that the, this was the, the greatest time of my adult life, it's because there was a time in my childhood that the, was the individual greatest time I've ever had. And it was my family driving cross country. My father shut the summer down and we drove a camper across country to family reunion in LA, then up back through the Southern route, back to Philly. And it was- mm, That's a long ass drive. Oh yeah, yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a month, Oof. you it's know. It's two days from Texas there, so that probably took you yeah, four, yeah, no, yeah. four, yeah. <laughs> it was like, is Texas ever gonna end? <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> and yeah. the only thing, only thing worse than that is the South and North in California. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you drive that North that. South in California, mm -hmm. you be in, in California forever. Mm -hmm. Some desert. I remember, I got a short story. I remember where we did that. We drove from Texas, rented an RV, never been outside of Texas. You? Me and my family. My, <laughs> my grandfather. You? Yeah. Newsflash. Yeah. yeah. You my was in an RV? And we, and we drove from <laughs> right. Texas to San Diego, but this is why I remember the trip. So that drive, you get bored. Yeah. Super bored. Yeah. So we stopped. And, you know, we was kids, so as soon as we stopped, I'm ready to run and do something. So I punch my cousin and take off running. <laughs> he chases me. Ha ha, you ain't gonna catch me. Bow! Ran mm -hmm. dead into a tree. <laughs> so for the next day and a half, I ain't got no skin on this side. <laughs> I got bass. I'm riding, I'm looking like two face off Batman. I got skin on this side, and I'm just sitting there like, I'm ready to go home. Is that when how they, you're, when they that, say God don't God don't like ugly? God don't <laughs> like ugly. I ran clean into that tree, man. Is that how your nose got smashed down? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's what I was waiting on, though. Oh, man. That's the first joke. I, I don't know what took him that long. I know. It, 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 it normally don't take him that it's long. It's been too uh, real. Yeah, it normally hey, don't take him that long. Real. Yeah. Yeah. It's been too Maybe real. Maybe because we're here with you, because it normally yeah, no, don't take him yeah, that no, long. We don't, we, it's, it's, it's the slavery movie and the Oscars kind yeah. of brought us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now we now we Now, now we, we climbing those back up. Now yeah. we make some jokes. Let's get it. Let's get it. Oh, man. We're back for season four of All the Smoke and very excited to have alongside of us our partner Moneyline. Yeah, Moneyline's family. They've been our ride or die. This year ain't no different. Definitely. And stay locked in because Moneyline is providing dope experiences, prizes, stuff we can't really talk about. But just know, man, when you're messing with Moneyline, they're always providing amazing experiences. They brought me and Jack out to Vegas to experience our first NASCAR event. Moneyline is the only app you'll ever need. Cash advances. Credit building, investing, and expert advice. Download the Moneyline app today or visit moneyline.com backslash all the smoke to learn more. Basketball movies. Growing basketball. Up, what was one of your favorite movies? See, basketball what was movies. Basketball growing up. I know you a hooper. Yeah, what, what was the what was the one? What was the basketball movie? Only Who Hoosiers was it? Cornbread back. Earl? Yeah. It wasn't Cooley High. Cooley, yeah, Cooley High, yeah. <laughs> well, I was like, what was the basketball movie? Who's your back there? That's probably the only one. The Fish to Save Pittsburgh, Doc. Oh, I don't believe yeah. I missed oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. am I tripping? Yeah, yeah. 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 Fish to Save Pittsburgh. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Yo, that's my dude. When did you fall in love with the sport? Um, it was really the only, I wasn't, I was never good, but it was the, the, the only thing athletic I could do. Like my my you words. You sure talk were about it a lot your whole career. We got us thinking. Oh yeah, nice. no, no, because on the, <laughs> on Fresh Prince, you just yeah. had a shot going. At the Bel Air Academy, he was you nice. You pull that down to eight and a half foot rims, <laughs> <laughs> dunking on people. Yeah, shoot. I, oh, oh, you didn't say if I could act like I could hoop. Oh, shoot. Listen. You did that. 
Yeah, shit, you give me the right camera, man, I'll right. take both of y'all down. <laughs> <laughs> the right camera? The right camera, man, shoot, I'll be looking hard. Being from Philly, what did it mean to you to be able to now be a part owner of the 76ers? Yeah, a lot of people man, don't know that. I know, yeah, because every time the season starts, I've been working. Like, uh, so like, you can't get out to the games. Yo, yeah, it's like, we had one, like, crossed, I was shooting bad boys in Miami, and the team was playing in Miami. I was like, okay, okay. I haven't been, like, I literally been to like four games, you know, so I'm, I'm selling my city out real bad. <laughs> um, but dude, that first time, I remember the first time that I walked in to the arena, and the hometown fans knew that I was, you know, part, uh, part owner. Dude. You want to go see nah. that? Oh my God, no. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the right Listen. cameraman at? I can, get, I can get you about 10 <laughs> points tonight. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing like walking into your hometown arena. And that's a tough crowd and in they, there too. Yeah, yeah. It's a tough crowd in there. Yeah, Philly's a tough crowd. Mm -hmm. Philly, Philly's generally good to Philadelphians. Mm -hmm. It's just if you, you come from outside, Mm -hmm. You know, it can mm -hmm. it can get bad. I got a chance to play with AI there. They walked on. He walked on water out yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. AI it's was, like yeah. can a, know? AI in Philly. Mm -hmm. You know, he could park anywhere, anywhere. he wanted, and he did. Yeah, <laughs> and he did. <laughs> to, this day, <laughs> to this day, yeah, so he, Yo, did. Listen, he did. He did. He did. No, sports fans, Philly sports fans. Like if you, they just need you to work hard. You work hard, they love you. Blue collar. Yeah. Yeah. When did music come into the picture for you? Twelve years old. Um, I started writing rhymes, and that was uh, just after the Rapper's Delight. Mm. When Rapper's Delight hit, it was over for me. Like, it, it, was, it was like God telling me that's what I needed to do, you know? <laughs> and I heard that, and it was, it was um, I just knew, you know? And, it, you, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's the same thing with, with athletics, but just you had that first time and you just know. It's like, I just I'm love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. This is what I want to do. It's like I found, I found my power in words, mm -hmm. you know. I found the, uh, the uh, just the essence of who I am in, in hip hop. Mm. How instrumental was uh, Jazzy Jeff for you? You said it, you never met someone who worked yeah. harder than you. He showed you, he set the bar. Yeah, Jeff is Jeff is a musical genius, right? Jeff, the references that he can call and the things that he understands about music. I knew how to rhyme, but Jeff knew how to make records, mm -hmm. right? Jeff had like uh, ten thousand records in his basement. He had, we came from a musical family, and uh, Jeff had he had cancer when he was young, so. His mom, he couldn't go outside. Yeah. So he lived in that basement with those records. I didn't even know what cancer was back then. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. It was, it was like, it was funny. Yeah, it, it is. It's interesting. Yeah, it, just, it seemed. I guess just being young, I just mm -hmm. had no idea. Right. You know wh what that was. It was much more of an adult right. uh, yeah, under, understanding. But yeah, he was, he was uh, sick for a couple years, and um, and uh, beat it. And but his whole time was in that basement with records, and that became the world mm. he uh, disappeared into. Mm. So you're on tour now as a as a late team with Public Enemy and two live crew. Dude, what was that? Bro, like? please tell us one of those stories. It's crazy. I just did a I just two live uh, crew Public Enemy. Two live, but that's how hip hop was back then. Just like you could put all the different mm -hmm. crews on one mm -hmm. show. So it was it was Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Public Enemy and Two Live Crew, and I talk about in the book yeah. about us going through the South. Yeah. Right. So in the South they had morality laws, right? So we they would meet with us uh, ahead of time, and you know the local sheriff would come in, meet with all the groups, and they would say, "Hey, you know, we know what you did in making Georgia the other night. Just just don't think you're gonna do that in Mobile, right?" And so here's the, if you perform this in your show, if you perform that in your show, you will be pulled off stage, mm. right? Um, and Chuck D, Public Enemy, had a, a, a piece where they would hang a Klansman on stage mm -hmm. as a part of Every show. their show. And 
Luke Skywalker would be naked. Oh, ten minutes, oh everybody like, on his set. <laughs> Whole strip club. And I was in, I was like, I was like, officer, sir, you don't need yeah, to say right. nothing to us. But I promise you, Chuck is in his <laughs> class, man, tonight. And I promise you, Luke is gonna yeah, have, have his balls, balls out right. before the first quarter. I yeah. thought, hey, I was hey, I was <laughs> nothing you can do about that. Hey, listen. And Listen. sometimes they got arrested. They know we'll yeah. sell out the next show. Yeah, that, and that's yeah, that's what Chuck. Mm -hmm. that, you know, Chuck was uh, Chuck was saying they 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 were really aggressive on the first part of the tour. And Chuck said, as we started to move under the tour, and I never knew it. He said he started feeling like he was putting everybody in in jeopardy. So he started picking the cities where right. they would do it, but. Luke would get her. Luke was having to do every other show because he'd be in jail for one. <laughs> he missed one. So, so he would he would do the Tuesday night show. He would miss be Wednesday because he Thursday. was in jail, and he'd be back on Thursday. Yeah, I laughed. When, I, I laughed out loud when you were. It, it was obviously in your head, but you're like, officer. I, I agree. You don't have to tell me. My mom and I are already yeah, on the same exactly. page. Like that's not good. We're gonna like, be no. good here. Yeah. But it was like on on that tour. It's like those dudes were genius. Chuck would show up with activists. He would have lawyers and activists with him to meet with the <clears throat> sheriffs. Luke realized there were, there were uh, FCC laws when he was in, in Miami. He realized there were FCC laws. Took it to the ocean. And so he got a boat mm -hmm. and put his radio station on the boat because it was like maritime law, so now he's in international water, so then he could say, I was like, loopholes, hey, the business like, side, the business. These? You know, business, and it was like yeah. being, that was really like our first tour and just seeing the level of intellect that these mm -hmm. dudes were using to, you know, get their get their right. music out in the world. And we we just wanted to like party and mm -hmm. meet girls. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was like they were they were doing something else. Mm, next level. Yeah. Uh Russell Simmons, it took him a second to get to you. Yeah, yeah. But, but, <laughs> but once he got to you, how instrumental was he in in, in kind of just opening doors and expanding your guys' opportunities? Yeah, Russell, Russell was Russell was, you know, single-handedly directing the landscape hip -hop, the culture you know and culture during that time um and russell was our manager um and i remember just I, I didn't talk about this in the book but when i when when i knew i loved russell so we signed for management so russell uh, and leor cohen had our management so a couple you know a couple of years went by things were going well and it was right before fresh prince and I had contracts that wouldn't allow me to do Fresh Prince. So I go to, I go to Russell and I was like, you know, because my rush contract stated that I had a certain amount of touring, whatever it was. So I said, you know, I went in and I was like, I was like, you know, Russell, you are, you, you holding me back. And it's like, you call yourself an artist manager and you don't know shit about artists. And I have a dream and I have a vision for who I want to be. And your mind is so small that you can't write blah, blah, blah. I'm giving him all of that. And Russell's sister, and he looks at me and his eyes welled up with tears. And I was like, ooh. And he said, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting. His eyes welled up with tears. And he said, you really think I'm holding you back? And I was like, I had, I had like committed, so I had mm -hmm. to double down. I was like, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and he paused and he looked over at his lawyer. He said, let him go, you're free today. Mm. And I was like, ooh, and let me out of the contract literally with nothing, no strings attached, nothing. Mm. You know, he could have taxed me on Fresh Prince and movies and all that. No, clean. Let me wow. go that day. Wow. And I was like, I love that dude. Yeah. That's somebody want to see you win. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And it was like, it was a deep offense to him that an artist felt like he was holding him back. Mm -hmm. He's so committed to, like, his whole life is helping artists, mm -hmm. you know, uh, achieve their visions. Six seasons of The Fresh Prince. Yes, sir. Do you feel like, during that time, you kind of really honed into who you were as, a, as an actor? Yeah, I, th I think one of the best things that ever happened uh, to me in terms of acting was James Avery. Mm, that was a 
cold scene. Yeah, James Avery. He he was like, nothing was good enough. He was like, nope, you have too much talent for that. Nope, more. Nope. And it was like, I'm doing movies and I'm trying to, you know, and it was like, he made sure that I understood my responsibility to hone my craft as a gift to the world. You know, he was like, no, you're, you're, you've been, you've been gifted too much to play with. Mm. Right? And he just kept pushing me, kept pushing me. He watched everything I did. He commented, he would give me notes on everything. And, you know, yeah, I, talk, oh, I talked about that in the book too, mm -hmm. that the, uh, the, the father scene. Father scene, yeah. The father scene was the first time. And, uh, you know, we had the moment, we were doing the scene and, you know, I was, I was blowing my lines, I couldn't get it together. And at the end of that father scene, James Avery is hugging me. And he whispers, he whispers in my ear, now that's fucking acting. That's dope. Right? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to uh, uh, jump in front of you real quick. Mm -hmm. You guys had every beautiful woman that was going to be something come through that show. How listen, did that happen? Listen. Every single one came through that show. Listen. It's too much power for one man to have. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> man. <laughs> I mean, every when I look when you when you you catch the reruns these days, I'm Dude, like, damn, just she say, was yo, on the damn, she was on there. Like, damn, she was on there. Yeah. Oof. And it's like it wasn't on it wasn't like on purpose, but it was like it's the hot show, right. and it's you know mm -hmm. one of the handful of black shows right. on, and so everybody. Was, Unbelievable was coming through on on Fresh Prince. It was it was. Um, thank God I was married. I would have ruined my life for sure. <laughs> yeah, quick, yeah. I would have ruined my life for sure if quick. I wasn't married. Quick. I knew that, I knew that young too. I knew that young too. That that's that a lot of power to have at a young all age over too. The place. Yeah. <laughs> each, each episode, <laughs> I was all over the place. Sorry. 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 My, hey, my bad. My bad. <laughs> oh, um, man. Start bringing some ugly ones in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to make my, it. My father, my, father was, my father was hardcore, and I had done something. And, uh, he gave me the, gra the greatest quote, and he was, he was furious. I was, had girls at work and stuff like that. And he just screamed at me, keep your dick out them people's money. Mm. That's a bar. <laughs> That's a bar. I was like, <gasps> For real. Yo. That, that kind of touched my soul, for real. <laughs> I had to think for a Word, second, right. like, shit. <laughs> that was, that's Daddy-O. Daddy-O kept it can, rough, rugged, and raw. I'm just thinking right now. Yeah. <laughs> I know a couple brothers need to hear that. <laughs> man, man, for real. Oh, man. Yeah, man, yeah. yeah I, real. Cha I changed it for my kids. It was the right idea. Right. I, I, I tell my kids, uh, no fishing off the company pier. And there yeah. you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did, did you know what you was doing for the culture during the Fresh Prince when you were showing up with them Fresh J's? No I idea. I know you didn't. No idea. I know you did. It's like I was I was living the culture. Right. Right. You so, were the culture. Uh, well, right. Yo, at that time, uh, you were it was the culture. Like, I was I was literally calling Jordan. And I was like, Mike, please, please don't give it to nobody. Like, just let me be the first person. Oh, really? I gotta be the first person That's to wear it. That's dope. He was like, man, I don't run that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't run that. He was like, dude, you sure enough had him, though. But you sure enough had him. Yo, the, the fours were the Fresh Princes. They called yeah. the fours the Fresh Princes. Fives the, now, the, 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 It's the fives now. It's the right? fives now. Yeah, yeah. You got, so you, they it, did the, I haven't seen, I haven't seen pair. the new ones. It's four yeah. pair of fresh, fresh Prince fives. Wow. Yep, it's four pair. Mm. That's mm. crazy. Yep. Uh, you had a sit down with Aunt Viv. Yes. And I, yes. I got a chance to watch that. How how important was that for you? Man, so. Bring the tissue out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it coming on. I feel it. No, I'm gonna be mature. I'm gonna be mature. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it coming on. I feel it. I know, right? <laughs> um, 
No, nah, I, I said thank you. That's the, that's bad. I can't, I can't be on all of the smoke needing to. No, 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 no. This, we get, we, that's what this is. Hey, we get in touch this with our feelings really, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we get in touch um, with our feelings. I desperately want to be a good person. Like, I desperately want to be valuable, you know? And I didn't, I didn't understand how deeply I was offending her. Mm. I just, I, I, I didn't even comprehend how, um, you know, I, had, I hadn't had kids myself. My son was born, you know, during, during the Fresh Prince. But to the comprehension of when a, when a woman is pregnant, the level of sensitivity mm -hmm. and difficulty. And Janet, Janet had a difficult pregnancy and all of that. And I'm in my next room banging the music, right, well, on set. And it was, it was unconsciousness is a terrible enemy. And I just didn't know. I didn't know. Um, I love Janet, man. And it was like, I wanted her respect. Like, she's a, you know, stage trained actress, singer, dancer. Super talented. Super talent, right? And I wanted her respect. I wanted her to think I was great. And during that time, she didn't. Mm -hmm. And I had a negative reaction to that. Um, so it was really important to me, you know, after I started doing my work, I started, you know, trying to understand myself and understand how I'm interacting with people. And once I saw clearly my offenses, I, just, I needed to, I mm -hmm. desperately needed right. to clear them up. And Janet was, you know, wide open and, you know, it was, it was rough, you watched it. Yeah, I watched it, it yeah. Was rough, it was rough, rugged and raw, mm -hmm. you know, but it's like, that's who I want to be, man. That's, I don't want to be beefing with people. But like you said, nobody's perfect. And I yeah. think too often we let shit slide that we're wrong about yeah. and not say anything. Mm -hmm. Right, so I think that's big. Uh, switching gears, Bad Boys, the franchise. Yes, I know you got number. You got number four coming yeah, up. Yeah, just talked to Marty. I just talked to Marty Ma. This guy thinks he's an actor. But oh, where yeah. did where did that? Charles at? Where, yeah. where, where, Charles where, they was <laughs> pitching me for the for the new Bad Boys. I, I, come on, Charles, you you, you got to be here on this segment. Yeah. Where did the, uh, <laughs> where, where'd the idea uh, of Bad Boys come from? Martin actually had the script for the first one, and Martin brought me in. Oh, okay. Right. So. That's, um, dope. That's dope. Yeah, they wanted him to do it with Eddie. And, you know, uh, Martin's sister was like, you should do that with Will. Mm. And, you know, Martin, Martin called me. And, uh, you know, we sat down. We had one meeting. And, you know, the script wasn't, the script wasn't together. It was originally for uh, Dana Carvey and John Lovitz. They were the original bad boys. Oh. Good choice. Yeah. For you guys. Yeah. For you guys yeah, to do it. Been, that would have been a very different movie. Right, yeah, man, totally different. It was Dana Carvey oh. and John Lovitz, and they fell out. And then uh, Jerry Bruckheimer and Don Simpson brought it to Martin. And then Martin said, I won't do it without Will. Mm. So he brought me in. And um, hell of a duo. Yeah. And it, it was, you know, the script the script wasn't all the way there, but I think what happens because we were both on television shows, right? So we were used to on the making the stuff up on mm -hmm. the fly. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he had his group of writers, I had my group of writers, we had our boys, and we came together and you, we were literally making the scenes day to day really? That's dope. as we were going on. We That's had hard. he had his squad, I had my squad. We would come, we would do it. We was writing the stuff. Oh, but you know, cool. right. on the set, and then try to do that, and it was it was, you know, one of the greatest uh, friendships I've ever had in the business. Mm -hmm. the Love laughing that. on that set. Oh, oh my I'll god! Take. I can only imagine. Oh my god! I can only imagine. Uh, I'm gonna just, tell a story I've never told. Please. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Love it. So, please. Martin was newly married, so he was like. 
He's like, well, let, uh, you know, in Miami, it was like, I'm not, I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> I'm not doing nothing. So I'll, this is the, for the first, first one? First one. Okay. For the first one. Newly married, he was like, dude, I just don't. Mm -hmm. I, it's like, I was like, Marty, Ma. <laughs> 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 we in Miami. <laughs> right. Come on, you got it. He was like, no, no, no. I was like, dude, it's like, we got to go. It's like, for the culture, mm -hmm. they know like we the mm -hmm. bad boys. Like they know it's like for life. Yeah, it's like come on, man, <laughs> right? <laughs> so Prince had a club called uh, Glam Slam. Glam Slam. Glam Slam. Sounds like Prince trouble. had a club in Miami. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so you can imagine what a Prince club was like. Look. So it Purple was, everywhere. Bur yeah. <laughs> Everything swayed. You got to have nice hair to get in. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, I can't get in there. I'm with you, though. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm your plus one. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> so I get, I get Martin. I was like, Martin, come on. Prince got this. Is he, he You got can't this turn club. down Come Prince. on, Martin, come on. And he was like, man, all right. So we go. And Martin is literally sitting there with his hand. And he's sitting there. And it's... It's thick. It's wild. Like, I'd <laughs> never seen nothing like this club, right? So we're sitting there, and there is a, there's a balcony that looks over onto the dance floor. So we're up in the balcony, VIP, we're sitting there. Martin's sitting, and there's, like, like girls like you just can't, you know, you've been to Miami, yes, so yeah, you know, yeah, right? Yeah. So the girl walks up and stands in front of Martin, and she's standing there, and she's dancing in front of Martin, and he's like, oh, come on. And she lifts her skirt up, and she has nothing on under, mm -hmm. and she's asking Martin if they could. <laughs> she wants to have sex in the club. And I look at Martin, and he's like, this one don't fucking go nowhere <laughs> with you. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Right out the door. He, he was right gone. out the door. He Piss. just like right out of there. Pissed. Pissed. Ah. He should have hit us like, baby, Piss. you would have hit me three Martin months ago. We could have been. <laughs> Martin and I have never been out again. Damn. Damn. <laughs> never been out again. I would have left you there. <laughs> wow. Left yeah, that's there. funny. <laughs> you still might be in there, huh? What'd you say? Baby, baby, I'm not coming home. Yeah, I mean, Kiss the kids. Yeah. Yeah, take care. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh, man. Um, how um, was it playing Muhammad Ali, and how oh, hard man. was it to what, look what, here what, now? Take, mm. Yeah, and that was one of the greatest things I ever did in my life. Mm. <laughs> you got to understand when you playing somebody that's great like that. When you play these roles, see what happens is there's a part of you that is always changed, man. When you when you spend some time with a character like that, mm. there's a part of you that's always changed. You'll mm. never be the same. So there's a little piece of Ali that's in me for the rest of my life. Mm. <laughs> <That's beautiful. laughs> On cue, right? Great On question. Cue. Great On question. Cue. Hey, you know, you know what? Mm -hmm. There's only one person that was able to do Jamie exact, Fox. That's it. Yeah. Uh, we had Jamie. On cue like that? We Yo. had Jamie. Jamie had us roll before we even started. We couldn't even stop laughing. Yeah. Our, our face hurt. Our stomach hurt. Oh man. I'm sure that was fun. Yeah, uh, Jamie's the bear. King Richard, how important do you feel like that role was Man. to be brought to life? <clears throat> like those kinds of stories where you think you know right. the story. Yeah. I love those where you mm -hmm. think you know, but you don't know. And, but you don't really know, you know? And, you know, he had been so vilified and, yep. and villainized. <clears throat> And I remember the first time talking with Venus and Serena, and it was like so much love. They loved that man. And I was, it was, it didn't fit the image of what right. I have, you know, of the overbearing father that demands mm -hmm. his kids. And he didn't, he didn't do that. And Venus, uh, referred to it as the Jedi mind trick. Mm. She says somehow he convinced us that we wanted to play tennis. They had to beg him. She was like, he had done something where their punishment was they couldn't play tennis. Mm. Right? And she said to the point that one time Serena, uh, uh, Serena got in trouble and she couldn't play and she went in her room 
and balled a sock up and put rubber bands around it and was hitting it like against the wall, the wall mm. in, in her bedroom. And somehow he inspired them to play, not demanded that they, they play. And it just changed everything about their, um, their relationship. And, you know, my, my mother had met him and she was telling me how hilarious he was before I, before I did the film. And it was just not the image that I had of him, you know? So um, I loved being able to set the record straight. Um, about Richard Williams. Mm. Yeah, he was he did a great job. He was a that. really yeah. um unique teacher and advocate for those girls. Mm. Mm. Well, quick hitters, <laughs> first thing to come to mind, let us know if you had to pick if you had to pick, I'll give you two. Mm -hmm. Two movies, your, your two favorite roles you've been able to do thus far. Number 1 is definitely Pursuit of Happiness. That's his favorite movie. Yeah, Pursuit of Happiness. That's it's my like favorite movie. that's just one of them ones where everything just came together mm -hmm. beautifully. With your little man too. Yeah, with my son, dude. In that the bathroom, story mm -hmm. with my mm -hmm. actual son. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Never forget that moment. Pursuit Pursuit of Happiness, I think is like the the best all-around movie I've ever made. It's beautiful. Right. Um I said that in the car. Yeah. And there's other ones I like for different right. for different reasons. We we'll just leave that one there. Yeah, yeah. That we just do. It. Yeah, I think that I think that's mm -hmm. that's. I'm um, um, pursuit of happiness and King Richard was pretty King that Richard, close yeah, there too. Oh, man. King Richard was pretty. I watched dead. that back to back nights. Yeah, had my joint both nights. Just yeah. hey, Will is over here killing this shit. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Being a hip hop head, what three artists are in your playlist right now? Three. What three artists? In my play, oh, I got actually, a platinum album, by the way. Too. Huh? I got a platinum album, by the way, too. Oh, word, word. Yeah, you. So yeah, because I remember you did. You did that. It's platinum. It's platinum. Is it? Is it? Is it old school platinum or is this new school platinum I, where they give you for for streams? I got a million streams. Stuff like that. Streams. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this what time I'm in. I'm not. Uh, a, I'm not no. a rapper though. I just did it for joy. I know. I mean, I get it. I get. It. I, I mean, because I I sold like a million CDs. No, no question. Hard copy. Where people had to go buy hard, hard copy. copies. Yeah. So they had to go actually, to the store. Actually, and three like million. Put money. Eh, the yeah. stream. You kind of yeah. click. I mean, okay, I'll give it to you. I mean, it is platinum. It's platinum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's platinum. <laughs> <I'll give you. laughs> that's how Shaq. Sound. That's how Shaq sound when I tell Shaq. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you did, but not how I did it. I got songs with Biggie. <laughs> oh no, dude. Oh man, in my play, it's all right. So I just did a thing with Jaden, and I just put together the the an old school playlist of people that I wanted him oh, to, learn to to listen to. And Rakim was first, right? Mm. So Rakim was the first one in there. Um, Good choice. Uh, yeah, it's like for him to just see where we've been to feel feel where we're going. So I I literally just made that playlist. Um, I think Mel's verse, Melly Mel on um, on uh, the message. Mm. I put that in there for him. Um, nah, you went way back on that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's really original. That's like that shaped me. Um, and I put together some of the old school tapes for that's for dope. him back to I love you that. know I Grandmaster love that. Cass, Cold Crush Brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, I that literally that. just made. That that playlist, but no, looking at your son from the outside, and I never met him, I don't know him, mm -hmm. but he gonna dig rock him. Yeah, oh for sure. Because his the 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 substance and his this, music. Yes, he, gonna he dig loved that. that. He gonna yeah, dig he loves that. that. When I say first, was it is it rapper or hip hop artist to win a Grammy? I'm not sure the proper title, but yeah, first. To uh, yeah, either first, one. First, the yeah, first. It's the first. What do you? What, it's what, the first of both. You right, know, so right. you know, <laughs> you know, however. You know, uh, our, our, our platinums are different. You know, tomato, yeah, plat tomato. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> But how does that I get it? Yeah. yeah, you know, first Uno. Yeah. How do you wanna, you know. When you look back on that, you know, and and, and kind of see where the music is now, but to think you were the first to to earn a Grammy, what does that mean to you? Yo, it's crazy. I was uh, just talking to Chuck D, right? So, um, the NARIS, the Grammy organization, decided not to televise the oh, category guys, you, you, you the first year, right? And we boycotted. That's right. That's so right. So all of the rappers boycotted. And 
So we had a boycott party. I was just talking to Chuck D. And Chuck D had the line, uh, who gives a fuck about a goddamn Grammy? <laughs> right? And I was standing next to Chuck D when they announced the winner is DJ it is G. <laughs> 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 I, like, I do, kind of. Yeah, yeah kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. That's dope. Uh, five dinner guests, dead or alive? Oh, wow. Nelson Mandela, first and foremost. Um, five dinner guests. All right, so I would definitely want to sit with Nelson Mandela. Um... Lao Tzu, mm. um, I guess his translator would have to come mm -hmm. too, that would take a seat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Maya Angelou, I never really got to talk to her. Yeah. Will, darling. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, George Orwell. Um, trying to keep the room interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> that's four, right? Mm -hmm. Um, let me see, Mandela. I got to see. This has to be a good one. Hold on, let me see. Let me see. That last so dinner table. Mandela, mm -hmm. Maya Angelou, Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky. Have to look him. Look him yeah. up. Who uh, is that? Crime and Punishment. He wrote, he wrote uh, Crime and Punishment. I just read uh, Crime and Punishment and the, the Underground Man. And like he had something, he had something really interesting. And I would only want him to uh, debate Mandela. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some dinner conversation. Yeah, yeah. If you could see one guest on our show, who would it be? But mm. before you answer, there's a catch. Yeah. You have to help us help, yes. get your answer on the show. Absolutely. Oh, I got it right For the sure. No, I'm there. there. I'm there. Have you had Denzel? Oh, shit. Shut the front door. <laughs> 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 Absolutely not. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, Denzel is wow. a real one. Wow. Denzel's a real one. Four. Yeah. Yeah, Denzel. Yeah. Denzel. Man. Uh, <clears throat> he wow. grabbed me up these last six months. I love that. Denzel. Someone you leaned on. He's real, real. Denzel's real, real. Love to hear that. Man, we appreciate your time and just really want to tell you, man, we love you and we appreciate you. Thank like you, how important you. you are to our culture. Man, this is priceless, man. How important you are to just the movement, Thank period. You, man. Yeah, Keep hey, going. I'm on it. I'm, we appreciate I'm, I'm recharged you. and ready. Yes, <laughs> yes. Is this, uh, we got a little gift yes. box for oh. you here. We got some gear for you. Mm. Where, they, where can they find that at, Jack? Uh, Allthesmoke.store. There you go. Allthesmoke.store. Yeah, some fresh gear for you that was uh, specially designed just for you. Mm. Nobody's going to have the that. Exclusives. These are all one on ones. Mm. Mm. Fresh gear. And we know you oh, like gear like that, that, so it's one on one. Like okay, okay. But while you're opening the gear, we can yeah. announce that, you know. I'm doing my, we doing my doc here. Hello. Oh, that's right, absolutely, yes, yeah. Sir. Westbrook. We working together, so it's family. family, it's all family yes. now. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, it's all family yes. now. Absolutely, yes, yes. And we I appreciate, appreciate you. you. I definitely man. appreciate Thank you, man. Yes, sir, and brother. and Ellen you, man. right here to my right has been trying to get me and you together for like know, five man, years now, sure. so I'm glad we finally sure. did. But again, man, we thank you for your Thanks. time. We wish you the best. Nah, thank and, you, man. And uh, man, this is, we. you might not see all the smoke no more. So this might be the last episode. Yeah, I might, yeah. Yesterday's price, not today's price. Yeah, that shit went way up, man. <laughs> you can catch us on Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform Black Effects. We'll see y'all. We might not see y'all next week. Go so <laughs> Yes. Give thanks to God. The Lord is with us. Papa! I will come back to you! beat me. They whip me. But they never, never break me.